to Finnegan Begin Again, episode number two. I have with me today my oldest son, Raleigh. <laughs> and this is Tessa. She's our neighbor friend that comes over and plays all the time. She's going to help us out today, too. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to remove the old practice engine block from the engine stand and put the new one on so that we can paint the intake manifold runners with Dicom so we know how much material to take out matching up to the intake manifold gasket. And we're also going to be beginning the work. Now, one of the questions you guys may have looking at this, this is an, an engine block that's mounted normally onto an engine stand because on these old Ford flathead blocks, part of the bell housing is cast into the block. And most of the time, you know, you would mount the, the spider back here onto the back of the engine and then it would be mounted longitudinally and we've got horizontally. Well, because of this, this isn't the strongest piece to be hanging this whole weight on and it can shatter um, sometimes. So they've made a jig over here that mounts into the exhaust manifold screws. So it makes it much um, stronger on here. And you can still rotate it 360 and get to it. The only problem with that is, is since we are doing the porting, we can't get to this side of the exhaust ports to do it. So we'll have to lift it up and rotate it 180 degrees and mount it on that side to do this side. But we can do three quarters of the work with it mounted like this before we have to rotate it around. So with that, we're gonna get started taking this one off and switching it over to the real block and we'll get going. block is a little bit too low for the hoist. So I've got my beautiful wife Katie up here to be a strong woman for me. And we're going to lift it up and Raleigh's going to get the hook in there as fast as possible. So, okay. So, hey, got I'm it. grab the bell. One, two,
Okay, so now we're gonna open up our gasket set. It should have all the gaskets we need for. What are gaskets? Anything. Gaskets are little pieces of material that go in between two pieces of metal and they keep them from leaking. What will leak? Oil. Gasket. Water. Pressure. Okay. This so this is like this is what a gasket is. So a gasket is a little piece of, of cardboard. This kind of looks like stuff for my like whale thing. Yeah. So the one that we're looking for in here is our intake. See how it looks like the top of the engine? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to do that. So what we need to do is we need to find out how big these holes are. The and if they are bigger than the holes on the engine, then that means we need to remove some of the metal from the engine. So if we lay this on here. This correctly. See, there's a little bit of material that's too big right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so let's, oops, I think off. we might have this on backwards. See. Yep, we had it on backwards. We had it on backwards. But still, that, so let's show the pizza, shall we? Yeah. So with the gasket on, you can see that right here, the gasket is a little bit bigger than the metal. The intake runner. And there, and there, all through it. So what we're gonna do with this block is that's our that's our marker to let us know how much material we're gonna take out. Because as it stands, if you leave that in there when the air comes into the engine, that creates a, a big corner that creates turbulent flow. And the more laminar you can make your flow, the better the engine's going to breathe. So we're gonna take our burr grinder and we're gonna remove that. What's a burr grinder? A burr grinder is a high spinning piece of metal that removes metal. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna, cause we're not gonna do it with the, the gasket in place. So we're yeah, going we to, to use that. that paint. We're gonna be painting on here and then we're gonna scratch that paint to let us know exactly how much material we're gonna remove. So, I'll do these two sides. This is where all those painting skills from kindergarten Elementary school are coming in, right? Mm-hmm. Is it okay if it goes down there, Dad? Yeah, it's okay. Okay, do the next one. It smells kind of bad. Okay, do this. Okay. Wait, do I get to do the... No. No, Tessa's going to do this side. Okay, dip it in there again. There you go. Is that too much? Nope. Okay, perfect. Tessa, it's okay if it goes down. So look, a bunch of mine in this one is going down. And then... What does this bleed? No. Nowhere? Those lead down into the valves, down to the cam. Oh, right there? Mm-hmm. And where else are we going to paint? Okay, do this side, Tessa. There should be enough this in that side? brush. Yep. But why didn't I get to paint You're going to get to do it last. Mm -hmm. Why do I have to? Well, you know, if you're going to whine, you're going to go inside. And Tessa's the only one I will get to help. That's right. Or Tessa will get sent home. No, Tessa will still be helping because she's doing a good job. And she's not whining. She mostly all the time is crybaby. Raleigh, do not call people names. Okay, now Raleigh, do the last two. Dip it in there, be careful. Wipe it on the sides. There you go. It's a pretty blue. Mm-hmm. Is it so it stands out so you know where to put it? Yes. Does it dry fast? Yep. I think that side over there is already dry. I, I see a little close. bit of like watery spots like here, here, and a little bit of here and here. 
because I'm guessing it's a darker blue right now. But when it dries, okay, it'll put turn the brush back to light then. blue. Oh, Next, right. look, it kind of looks like a light blue. Mine is right here's a light blue. When do we need a scratch? So with the help of the kids, you can see, hopefully, you can see that there's a scribe line here which is showing us how much material we're going to remove. So I'm going to start gently with a ruby disc, corundum disc edge before I do the burr. This doesn't seem like a whole lot of material. If you're going to be taking out a lot of material, burr takes it out really quick. But I'm going to see how fast this will work it down. So here we go.
So hopefully you can see here from the ones that have been done. This one and this one. And you come down from the lip right here, the edge of the blue, it should be going straight down in instead of over here where you could kind of see where it kind of curves in a little bit. And you want that to be as straight as possible. One, to open it up so more oxygen can get into the engine. And two, to create a better flow for the air fuel mixture to get into the cylinder. So the less restrictive your flow, then the easier it's gonna breathe and the more power you can generate. So this is just the intake sides of each of them. So that's what I'm gonna be working on. Don't think you wanna see me do all eight of them, but just know that's what we're doing. Okay, so I've done this side of all eight. Now we'll have to tack it from the other side, down through here, to clean up some of the excess material that's in there. And to polish it up. Now, I will be going back through with the flat wheel and everything. This is just done with the hogging bit and then also followed up with that corundum ruby bit to smooth it out a little bit. But, you know, of course, the more highly polished it is, the better flow it will be. So, you know, when given the time, I'll go back and do that. All right, so moving on. So that's going to be the end of porting part one. Took a lot out of us, didn't it, Raleigh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we deserve some beverages. Yes, ah, uh, memories of childhood. Ah, anyway. mm. oh, fruit punch. Well, stay tuned for porting number two, where we will be going to the other side and working this section of the intake manifold and moving on to the exhaust manifold. Till then, have a great day.